afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, riveting, and amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, your one and beloved master of propaganda, off here to one versus one, own Langlas guy in the north of this Elpen, fighting for America, freedom, democracy, taking on the role here of the first armored division, with recon support, heavy cavalry, and mechanized company, fighting for freedom, democracy, hope. I guess. In the south of this expense run, fighting for the German army, Deutschland, Das Vaterland. Fighting for Stahlhelms, Jackboots, and really cool German armor. Taking on the role here of the Panzerlehr Panzer is shown here with Firesturm, Luftwaffe, and oh, watch there, double into John Pioneers, double into Bazookas for open. And as always, please comment, like, share, subscribe, press the bell button again. Gotta do this so we can keep the fight up against the YouTube algorithms. And that is one of the best ways you can fight them. For me, of course. And also big thanks to my Patreon supporters who keep me allow you know doing this as well on a monthly basis, daily basis, by pledging on Patreon and giving me the hard earned money. So big thanks to those as always. You too can join the ranks by pledging on Patreon, or if you just want to give a one time donation, that's also cool. Links in the description to do either. We're off here though. Both sides going a bit aggressively in here. Expense runner going center west east, whereas Elpen is going a bit more hard center east. Not much in the west so far there. We got recon support, heavy cavalry, of course, mechanized here. Move down the center here. There you go. Dodge and Chosen is, in fact, recon support with the raid tactics, the Iron R Pathfinders, the Air Dot Comet Group, Emmett Greyhounds, and Cluster Bombs calling the Pathfinders immediately, allowing to search out the faster troops here against Expense Runner here in the early game. Typically, one reason why this Dodge is popular alongside Airborne. You can just quickly pop them in there. Giving you just a few moments extra to infantry versus your opponent because you have to like train their stuff so you get them in faster. It's also one reason why some awesome is popular because again you just skip the whole training period and just begin popping them up very fast. So that's kind of to say a reason that's also popular. So well. we got Elpen there with the Pathfinders wrapping up here first engaged in the center. Reason's routed as expensive on a strikes a blow for Germany. Sam has been quickly laid down here moving up west side of the jump Punila. Very good. Rob's up behind the folks kind of Nice little maneuver there. We got the third false squad right here for Expense Runner for Germany. Pathfinder coming up here with this carbines and the scope and one Garand rifle right taking some mana casualties here. But there you go, Pathfinder getting in range. That's going to be a problem there for Expense Runner. But quickly backs off there with the false gunners. Realizing the sticks around too long there, they can quickly begin picking off men, and that's going to be very advantageous there for Elpen. No, it didn't need choice of additional infantry. Mark Court Black B, he's planning to go for fast tech for, say, a lieutenant or a captain. Tends to be also very typical here. And there you go. One for lining up here. Big engage going on. Break out between Elpen and Expense Runner. As we've got three full squad squads with the fourth one away. Plus the Sturm Pine is here. Sturm Pine with the car There's only a rear echelon squad to hold the line here. Meanwhile, the rest of Elpen's force are busy. He's still not teched up. He doesn't call in more of the troops. Mark, he's too pure. And there you go. Swing in with a huge. Hall of infantry against Expense Runner's forces, hoping to overwhelm the numbers. Note by what he did here, he actually pulled back the wounded rather scored so they can still. So can, the large units can draw attention, allowing the other ones to still fight once they are you know, not being the ones being focused down there. Clever little maneuver there by Elpen, and largely get the advantage of his Expense Runner actually overwhelm the folks going to do here. So a sneaky little maneuver, those forces are nonetheless heavily depleted. Got the jumpers moving about there. Got Rearson joining in, they might in fact get focused down in. It's going to be close there for Elpen, I think. Bit close, since again, a lot of the infantry is in a poor state, and we still got more troops. Swing in there from Expense Runner in the south as well. So one wrong call here by Elpen could prove to be quite disastrous. It does look like he managed to get along there. But again, very close, very tight there. Almost losing a route squad here, possibly getting a wipe there. Can he get it? Stuart Pons, of course, quite good at getting wipes. But in this case, not quite close enough. And so it does not work out there. Same Elpen's route squad there, though, again, just narrowly. Last man standing there. Every inch of his body aching due to all the bullets. And there we go. We got the company command post up there for Elpen. Oh, he also went for the lieutenant. He went for double tech. Yikes. That's definitely not something you see commonly like that. But Elpen win there. Both lieutenant and captain, of course, giving two infantry scores. Both the Thompsons, meaning they're effectively just a bit better than the ambush riflemen. Unless, of course, you also want the anti-tank rifle. We've got two of those, so probably isn't that a big deal. Plus, you can go for bazookas and bar, so they still pay off nicely there for Elpen. So now let's have, say, surge push there, if you will, on top of the path. Line. Suddenly, you're trying to push for the lieutenant and captain at the same time, just get some more infantry at the same time. Plus, in this case, unlocks more tech options, like anti-tank guns, machine guns, depending on what he needs. Meanwhile, expense one is going for the mechanized regiment here, the mechanized regiment headquarters, to be specific. Lieutenant being pushed back here. As Expense Runner puts up a fight here by the Haystacks, his men being slowly bit out nonetheless as more troops are running here for Elpen, he still has the Pathfinders. 
Foxport, they rarely could do with some machine guns here for expense run of course, I'm not planning a look here. And there you go, Capna as well. They're immediately adding the BAR here to further augment the firepower against the Kratz. Meanwhile, expense runners position here by the road is crumbling away here as Elpen launches another full scale assault across the wheat field. But there you go, Sturm Heinz launching a counterattack from the south, unseating the Pathfinder to the cell. Alpen still has so many troops, so much firepower that the Sturm Pan is sending the party and there we go, it is an absolute slaughter. The field littered with dying Germans and Americans. Cat moving up here, BAR in his hand. That's going to make it harder for the Sturm Pan to get close. West side here we got the Fulton right there, pressuring the left flank there for Alpen. 50 cal front for Alpen, he'll contain expense runners in from you, very good. Expense runner, meanwhile, we have yet to see anything, but he will not be surprised if we're going to see the looks like the Aufklärungs Panzer. Captain advancing, run from the center here. Some really big infantry engaging in the early game, that's for sure. Brutal ones too. Because they're about to reinforce. Then again, if he's going for the looks, he might just delay it so he can get out the looks faster since the looks does have a high training time or build time. Having been delayed due to, well, Otherwise, he just gets out too easily and just swings the entire game around. Or oh, is he planning for the Puma? Either way, it does seem like Spence Runner's playing some sort of vehicle, in which case he's willing to accept a delayed reinforcement there. Rather than being focused down with the Fulton in the ears, we've got assault rifles in the way there. Very good, but the assault continues to the counterattack. Moves in, Captain flanking in there, Fulton risking right. Got the Lieutenant pushed back, and there we go. We do get the 234 2. Puma heavy armored car on the earth expense run opposite worried about any light vehicle plus the Puma does work against infantry It may not be as good as it looks, but it does do a decent job especially to get around for long enough Other way though Elpen here launching the assault there. His men screaming out the lungs as they charge across the open fields expense runner trying to Predict the best counter-attack pattern here against Elpen fifth coming up which is gonna make it harder for expense runner to break out here of the stranglehold that Elpen's looking to establish. An aggressive push here by Elpen. An expense runner is certainly going to find himself in a tight position. There we go. Got the Puma out. The 234-2. And we got Lufa for ground force as well there. Adding more aggression. More elite infantry. More assaults. Fifth car falling back here. Opening up the car for a bit. But there you go. Puma hammering away. With this gun, it's not going to do so much damage against infantry. It's going to primarily rely on its coaxial machine gun. That can still snap here and there with the main gun. And of course, with an aimed shot, you can technically snap a model here and there, though. It's not necessarily the most cost effective way of, you know, killing infantry. At the same time, expense run realizes you need to push troops up left, right flank, does that. Sometimes the best way to deal with the opponent is not to engage them head on, and to try and play around it and force them to track to your movements. But there you go. Nonetheless, expense run is also wanting assault. He uses the Puma, though, as a sort of vanguard unit. Also opening up here for using smoke for some trying the fifth cup to allow the other troops to push ahead here. Parpan squad almost taken out here. Aggressive moving there we go. Threatening the rear path here of Elpen with the Puma. He might have a small chance taking out the Parfan. There you go. Greyhound out here from Elpen to help counter all this. Might all be reason why I went for the Puma over the looks because the Puma is going to be a lot better than the looks against the Greyhound. But right now the expense runner is in a top position. It's Elpen is throwing in light vehicles here from a nearby reconnaissance unit. Which is what the Greyhound for the primarily organized into reconnaissance units. <laughs> Replacing the Stuart Light Tank, by the way, which got relegated to infantry support. Ralph got that being handled by the Sturm Pants of the Puma. Ground holding back. Can't easily get close due to the presence of the Puma, which can either quickly knock it out. So we can see the ground is actually hanging back, waiting for the rest of the force to arrive, since on its own it's going to die. But where can go with the the 50 Cal Actus is shot here versus expense runner. So thumbs up there to Elpen, I think. Good tactical move, and then raises the Puma a ground that is hit too easily, anyways. Almost getting the Graf score. They can expense run and land the kill. Does he even care? He decides probably it's not worth it. At the same time, we turn down the fire. Fox could run with the Sturmgewehrs. Of course, got the Puma there, providing fire support as well. Three kills so far. Primarily, I imagine, from the Cracksville machine gun. Ground the West Point. Fifth to cover. I got Rear something in the fell pen as well. Puma opening up there on the rifle squad. Graham going here for the cutoff point, at least the units on it. Back here, Sturm Pani is laying down medical supplies, need to reinforce heal up. Of course, in my case, planning fights. You make us perhaps already versus Elpen. Some elite Luthaf infantry, of course, could put some pressure on Elpen. But there you go, great hit for the Puma on the Greyhound. Greyhound though, is not making it easy either. And we got armor piercing rounds on the 50 cal as well. And there we go, do get the fighting squad inbound here for Expense Runner. Greyhound moving about. Landing up, hit support the right flank. That's all there. You go good hit on the Greyhound, bypassing the 50 cal as well. Almost got the Greyhound there. 50 cal, the team set up. Puma there. Vets and C1, but also low health there. 
May have to back off now, but still does compel the fifth card to retreat, opening up for further pushes. Fighting is ready, avoided hitting anything and getting consumed by squirrels in the process. Good work there. Fit can attack here by helping his launch in his office and the Pathfinder squad calling out artillery here, using the Pathfinder in the midst of Expansion Runner's Force there. Devious calling there, giving only a few seconds to react before it shatters everything. The world in that vicinity just utterly closed. There go Panhunt down in the building, denying it to Elpen, unless he wants his men to burn up horribly without really killing anyone. Fartsman there being focused down there, good protestation by Elpen. Could have gone for the full screen, but getting rid of the Fartsman makers decreased the amount of firepower plus the of a grenade. Could consider concussive grenade here against all the engine bunch up. There you go, we do get the concussive grenade. Right, ah, easily dodged though. Fultz though flanking behind, using the building, getting behind the Pathfinders, focusing down first. Good idea there by Expense Runner, and he gets the Pathfinders. Significant blow there. Still, we got the fifth come about, suppressing the Fultz gonna need some forcing retreat for Expense Runner. Another brutal series of infantry engagements. The fields once more littered with dead and American German soldiers as either side goes at each other like berserkers in a ball pit. At a really, really suspicious restaurant. Fifth car moving ahead into the Falcon. This guy pushed for the car point again. Elpen looking to disrupt the expense runner's economy. Very good there. Falcon on the right in the fifth car. Back here, nothing further going there for Elpen. You can actually consider taking up soon, though that might be a bit too bold. Falcon making full dorsal encounter. And there you go. We got cluster bombs called in. Just Elpen looking to every tool he has to disrupt here. Expense runner's attempt at getting back into this. And the cluster bombs from down the Falcon is on the retreat, though. It's getting wiped out, and they get annihilated. Good. Golly, Puma though kind of tagging here, gonna try and take out the Greyhound finally, but no, it gets away. Seven kills on that Puma. Almost veterinary too, at least some way towards there. Don't need to fix it up as well. Absolute carnage. Just too stubbornly. Veteran players going at each other, but at the same time, not a complete bunch of pillocks either. Just two very honed, hard and aggressive players. So no, that's this game is all about killing the other bastards as efficiently as possible. M1 tank on there for Elpen is realized he needs something to stop that Puma that the Puma can't easily deal with. And that would be the M1 anti tank gun. The Puma is not great at dealing with anti tank guns. It can deal with light vehicles, it can deal with them with some medium armor, and you know, it can give infantry a headache, but it can't deal with anti tank guns or heavy tanks. But we can support American heavy tanks is hardly an issue. What do you mean we can't get heavy tanks? Well, you chose recon support. Like, it's not heavy tank support. It's recon support. You gotta, like, make a decision. But why? We're Americans, damn it. Well, blame the Canadians. God damn it. Anyways, more fights reports on the for expense. Run a Puma going steady for the Greyhound. Good hit there. Greyhound though, firing at the aircraft. Hoping to down it, but it's not working out. The Puma almost saying that they need to pop smoke. Oh, Nibel, and there we go. Pops it. Greyhound there. Gets away, but so does the Puma. Second Falcon Squad there. Once more voids the terrain. And that gives him two Falcon Squad to put pressure on Elpen's infantry with. Should help a bit. Oh, the Squad will put back for reinforcement healing. Let is going to take up soon. Meanwhile, Elpen has yet to take up either. And there you go. Falcon Squad the right for the Squad, the Lieutenant. And we got Smoke Bombs called in on the center. Neutralizing Elpen's positions. But also, briefly at least. Not in a sort of effective manner, but at least breaks up him to do anything. And also, of course, gives an idea what his opponent's up to. Thumbs up the takes Ben's runner, going for the fuel pump there. Very good. Rearson's falling back in the center. We still got the cap defending there. Puma there, good to go for expense runner once more. Seven kills, Vetney two, by the way, which increases accuracy and rate of fire, which is pretty good. And if it's the fleet actually gets a damage bonus, which is pretty good as well. Mostly versus vehicles and armor, obviously. That used to be a time when the damage bonus also applied to the actual machine gun. I think they fixed that, but it might actually be they didn't. That'd be a bit impressive, but I think they have. I'm going to get a truck on the way here for Expense Runner. That'll be the Schwerer Panzer Kutir. Meanwhile, they're taking advantage here of the break by the farm to push ahead with his infantry. The infantry's been depleted. And there you go. Puma actually snaps some poor bastard. Graham moves ahead. Still got the Antenna back up against the Puma. East side, though. Fox could try and flank in here. And the Fox with him. Another set victory point. Find their cover shattered. Alongside the morale. Graham flying away. They're close to Vetsony 2. Truck hanging back here for Expansion Runner. Graham moving up. Puma sneaking about here for Expansion Runner. 
Back hit trip ring forcing. Setting up the Schwerer Panzer headquarters. Schwerer Panzer Hauptquartier. Grand moving in there. Could spot, theoretically spot and destroy it, but I don't think he's going to do that. He's probably worried there might be something hiding around there, which is what there typically normally would be. But there isn't. Not this time. Still got the few point un out from under Elpen's nose. Fifth holding up there. Enter tank and if it's all bunching up there. If Expense had some artillery, this would be great, but he doesn't. Meanwhile, back in Elpen space. Nothing to go on there. No tech. No mechanized posts either. Troops reinforcing, healing up. Oh, expense run in, taking a bit more patience. Right, he's not going to just charge ahead here. Pointless in there. Go Gremlin hit. He's going after the Puma. Also spotting for the anti tank in the process. And then going up with the infantry. I mean, one thing you could consider is actually sneaking up, pin launching a larger scale flank through here behind Elpen. Maybe catch some of his units off guard. That could actually be quite effective, I think, here for expense run. Also, he needs to remember those five Smeagas. Like, they're just not really doing a lot. Could he's been pulled back for enforcement, maybe some healing. I think that do uh, expense run of a lot of good. Rather than just having, you know, a 340-man power elite infantry squad doing zip. But there you go. Head on the sword deck. Cluster one call in there. Punch expense run in there for a, well, not particularly well should assault. Unless, of course, it was just a bait call in the cluster bombs. Which case, impressive. And apparently, they ended up doing more damage to help him than him to his opponent. Yeah, those cluster bombs will take care of the crowds. They have special anti-American chips into them. What's a chip? It's like a french fry. Oh, how does that keep the bombs away from us? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, by the way. There's some inconsistency because some AWE attacks have friendly fire attached to them, others do not. Plus, the bombs do. would seem having a friendly fire attached to them, so. No fun fact. They've got Ken from the Expense Runner. Pulling in, shooting, missing the Greyhound. And there you go, anti tank and great head. The non touch red pops armor piercing, discarding sabo runs. The Puma's not particularly likely to bounce all the way. Of course, it might have misclicked. You actually plan to use to take aim, which I can understand. But just a small note there you don't need armor piercing rounds of a high caliber to deal with the Puma. It was not particularly well armored. Another push for the car farm. Got the function they ambush in them, quickly getting a kill there. Plus, the Shriap Hunt calls also faster shot. Of course, signaling to expense run where it is. And that it is there in the first place. You, of course, may want to consider upgrading the Fuzz Megas once it gets munitions for it, though he's a bit short there in the munitions department. Puma almost got to go for the expense runner. He's also closing on a Panther 4. Meanwhile, we also got the Mage out here for open. He can have to go for a tank ahead of expense runner here. So, thumbs up to open. Fuzz Megas finally forced to fall back as the position becomes unsustainable, to put it very generously. Puma there, half eight to Vetsony 3. And the damage bonus, plus mobility bonus. Sneak up the eastern side here with the foot's gonna looking to out maneuver Elpen. But looks like Elpen's always seen through here. Expense runners roost. They could pop their bounty assault here to boost his chance of actually making this work on the right flank. Does seem like he's not using that ability. He wants to save the mission for something else, which I cannot fault him for. But there you go, Banham Granada. Again, I think bounty assault would have done him much more good, but that's just me. But also after you know attack elsewhere as well. Instead, now the folks on the right flank here are being overwhelmed by Elpen. The Puma's not really doing much there either. Fuck being held up with the fifth car in the center. We've got another anti-tank for Elpen. For freedom and democracy. Pooming about here. Eight kills. Still half eight of it. New feet. Shoots and misses the Greyhound. Great hit here from the anti-tank gun on the Puma. Second shot misses, and we got the Panther for the Expense Runner. So, despite Elpen acting more resources, he ends up not actually getting a tank out fast than Expense Runner. Great for Expense Runner, less great for Elpen. Of course, he does have two M1 anti tank guns, and Expense Runner does lack artillery, so it may still end up being too bad for Elpen. Pulling westwards there, making us into the heavy fire. That's going to be there. Because, you know, that would be one source of artillery, and I'm not a big fan of the Stukas of Fus, but it's a source of artillery. Plus, it also has the possibility of using repair pioneers cheaply and efficiently, which, of course, means longer down the road, it's going to take some more time. They've got cluster bombs in here for Elpen. Again, calling him. This time, though, his men are safely distanced from it. Hopefully. Then he moves his men into it. <laughs> it takes several casualties. I'm fairly certain at this point, by now, that Elpen has suffered... 
more casualties than any from those cluster bombs. I suppose it's fitting because the cluster bombs were basically just German butterfly bombs the Americans straight up copied. So I suppose there's a fitting element to it. But anyways, Pan 4 plays 4 there he goes. Second enter tank in the line up behind the first one. Halts here, expands runners, holds breaks through counter attack. On the right flank, still he gets one of the anti tank guns, but he risks losing the Panta 4 here, which is definitely not great. He's trying for take it out here. Shot misses though, no for support here. Puma could try and move in, but it's also heavily damaged. And most of expense runners in for two deplete attack to keep up the attack. So he has to break off there, I think. His men too extended, bleeding, wounded, in need of aid. Alpine there going for the M36 Jackson tank to respond to this. Perhaps have something more range, so can stay clear of the Panta 4. Needs to just plonk it at range, plus of course the Puma. Well, the Puma, if it sort of gets fifty feet and makes use the aim shot, could actually, I think, help neutralize the Jackson tank destroy, making things in that way uh, less fun for Elpen. Find around the center here, anti tank recruit here by Elpen's brave men. Fighting as they're not being upgraded yet. A bit surprised at that. It's a very handy upgrade getting the remaining FT 42s. Sandbag's almost done. Puma good to go. Bit more movement in the left flank here could also be good, I think, for Expense Runner. And an MD40 for Expense Runner. Sehr good, sehr good. An angle M36 second tank shot there for Elpen, based off the Sherman chassis. Little fun fact there. Mackinac's Dragon Headquarters while is still standing. Sturm Pass moving up again. You could consider and the repair pioneers. Sandbags up if open, very good. And there you go, Greyhound encounters the Lakedon therefore. And then avoids it. Fighting mates got the centre. We got Fion 14 with Fion 7, Victory Pons whilst they're pretty close to each other. Jackson Grand moving out, back here, nothing further on there for open. For now at least. Fighting mates need to fall back, they're incredibly on health. Just drop there, and there you go, another set of cluster bombs. This time! He's at a safe range. This time. And this time he's not marching his men to it either. Area explodes. Most of the squirrels are getting killed this time around rather than Americans. Fartimans then need to join in. I think he's waiting to set up a bunker. There you go. Gabad the Ladnum. Flung into the midst of the Americans. Catch is again piling up. There's the assault. Speed on control. There you go. Great. Puma going for the ground. But there you go. Trade to hit from the ground. Jackson. Gets the ground, pops the smoke screen, quickly disengages with the 4 but suffers the damage ended from anti tank grenade. Panther on the flank here. Going in to support the Fartimans, the Fartimans are taking heavy damage as they're not ordered to fight freely. Not entirely sure why though. Perhaps an oversight from when they were supposed to ambush. Pushing through the, by the broken front line, south of the sandbags by the crossroads. Jump has fixing up this mechanized ring, needs to join the fight now, rather than try and fix up machine turn around to deal with it. Chaos here. By the mechanized red gun. Fulton bled out as the cat and the right wing, and they've got the jack wing plus anti tank guns. You really should just stop repairing it. It's gonna get destroyed anyways at this point. Just killed the Americans near it. Panther 4 joining in here. Anti tank and shooting at the machine and forcing back. Steel punch falling back. The mechanized red gun has been abandoned. It has become clear to expense runner that it's gonna go down. Absolutely brutal fighting now. Got on the way of the Philbin, priming with some artillery support and then the move. Very good. Meanwhile, Expansion Runner has no artillery support. But he does have a Destiny 4 Puma, which is close to the ace level. Antonin's trying to take out the Panther 4. The Panther 4 down to half of quickly disengages. Mechanized Dragon finally gives up the ghost here. And Assault here is easily thwarted by Elpen's 50 cal machine gun. Five Smakers and Fulton is ultimately. No match for that level of firepower. But there you go, folks. We've got a command to get off flank here. We got Fiona versus 295. Going here for the 50 cal, trying to clear it out. Fire to make his force back. The cash needs just keep piling up. Almost got the 50 cal, but ultimately has to break off. Stuart Pani is hard at work. In fact, they're overworked and underpaid. It's gone away to the open. And to tank, we're not going to take out this spare punch at quarters now. We got smoke bombs called in though. Buy more time here. In this case, attacking ground, but he's caught up here on the small elevation there, as you can see here. Certainly, one thing about a lot of the maps, they can look very flat, but then, sort of like, you know, took down the camera, you can see there's actually some elevation there, and a lot of stuff like that can get caught up on it. And there's five tank for the smoke, but they're already, you know, low in health. Got a full tank from the south here, folks, bound to run it. 
Stuart has going to fix it. Lieutenant Ratliff going to take five on the Panda four. Five points in the advance here. Tiller firing down for the Scott. Into the advance of expense runners. Can't take out the Puma backing up here though. Nine kills. Fox and Link bled out. Need to retreat them. Look so, look so. Scheiser. Puma going in for the Jackson. Could he get off an aim shot? No, doesn't. The nation shoots for back still. Managed to punch through here. Open front line. Apparently, open front line was all looking weaker than expected. Something spent running there. Advantage after something can rely on forever. At some point, that's going to end up poorly. Fox retreating here. Not the, at some level, that's going to begin healing. Yep, there we go. So that should help those out. Even fight makers eventually can self-heal after a certain point if they gain enough veterancy. A chem's moving about here. Scott Jackson moving up there for Elpen. And we got Weapon X only for Elpen. Rather late, but better late than ever. Bit of healing here though as well. In this case, they plop those down. Fix up the Puma. Guess it's gonna go for another Pantafor soon. Pantafor though, of course, in need of repairs spectacularly swiftly. Got 238 versus 295. Swing up here through the east fields here with his infantry open. Lines up for another attack on the crowds. Five continuing with the two radical. There goes Scott. Opening up him the spear punch for the sun. He wants to take it down that way. I mean, that's an option. Expense one is not far away from another Panther 4. And of course, you'll also consider Yak Panther or a Panther. From this in the end. Some attempted his leg of Fox Court. Gets wiped. Scott hit there. Plus, some infantry finishes off on the expense runners. Fox makes Schwartz. Well, quite expensive, to be honest. Boom there. Continues to not wait. Jackson goes to the Puma. Gets a great hit and gains veterans. He won. Also, looks like he might be lining up for something on the left flank, but isn't quite executing. Again, perhaps a sensible deep flank here could catch uh, expense run or Elpen off guard. And there goes. Second Panther for expense runner. Elpen maneuvering the Jackson about, moving up there, lining up most of the source here by the road. Fortuning up for what could look like a flank here. And sinking hold forwards. Scott finally advancing Fultzgund is. Puma need repairs. Just so much that the expense runner needs to do really at the same time, and that's obviously the challenge here. Right in advance, going to fire from the pen forward. Great hit there. Several men dead. As Elpen's defense is down to look a bit frayed here in the face of the Panther company. There, got doubling one setting up here. Forcing the Panther to fall back. One Panther going to hit the other bounces. Lucky there for Expense Runner. Infantry tank from the south. Five minutes. Fault going to be is. Second Panther almost done there for Expense Runner. Fault's all retreating. Bun grenade here on all the troops. Could also pop the burn cover there, and then the Bun grenade did do the trick. Looks like he's going to try for a wipe. There you go. 50 cal stops that. He needs to get the five minutes up behind the fifth cal. Deal with that. There you go. Force retreat nonetheless. Once more, Elpen sees the front line collapse due to insufficient infantry jack to hold it. Allowing them for expense runner to push through the rest. Now with two pantables and a puma at Betsy 4. That might be an opportunity to maybe take out the Jackson. At least just push the front very far ahead here. He may want to lay down some mines if he can. Okay, the rest of the troops moving. Schnell also salvage that one. If possible, for a bit of extra fuel. Quickly, the open R is replacing losses, patching up wounds, giving small pep talks. Remember, guys, you're Americans, not American dudes. You know, stuff like that. Captain Lieutenant up the left side here. Pantheon hanging back. Ooh, great hit there. Captain thought he was clever. Building collapses on him, proving he wasn't the clever. They're going to take the fight through the hedges there. Great hit on the Panda 4. Second one shoots, bounces though. Second shot from the first one misses. Jack's moving up there. Both shots now missing the Panda 4. They're attacking ground. And he's starting to get the Panda 4. The Puma here, but taking a hit from Bazooka. The Panda 4 could be a bit threatened here. Needs some support. Got the Fox ones joining in. Still no upgrades on those. Still no upgrades. I'm a bit surprised at that, to be honest. But I guess Expense Run just doesn't think it's necessary. He's forgotten about it. Both are possibilities. Another Scott Effect Spencer Runner. Clearly, he's got faith in the anti-tankers and the Jack and deal with all the armor and just wants to bleed out Spencer Runner's infantry, which is certainly not necessarily a wrong idea from Elpen, but not say what I go for myself. Thought they've routed it. Pantheforming up. They're going to try and engage the anti-tank for the hedge. Shot misses. Still feel like a bit of could be great for Spencer Army. Just going for the Battle Group headquarters for some medics, but also the light infantry. I think it'd be a great idea here for Spencer Runner versus Elpen. 
more shots fired there. Pantheon Kud is repaired, and the Puma in particular to do with a lot of repairs. It's halfway to the ace level. Still, once Melpin finds something of a bit of a tight spot, Essex Fence Runner is now more capable of holding him back and punishing him. There you go, Jackson with the North catching the Panther flank here. But misses. Panther 4, though, does not miss. Close to 52 on that one. Scott fires. Bounces off the Panther Gun Panther's arm. Panther Gun the Lieutenant in the center. Still nothing happening on the east side there. Got the MD4 foot put on the Lieutenant as well. Back here, Trip Reinforcing Healing. Put moving fixed up. Panther 4, they just seems forgotten here by Expansion 1, to be fair. Then we got two entertain guns, so clearly Elpen has not forgot about that one. And the Scots are just saying about them bonding with their semi final under cat howitzers. Scots, I believe, actually organized the stood light tanks as in from the support. They were sort of basically just the artillery support that way. So, little fun fact there. Used the same gun as the pack howards, actually. Puma good to go here for Expense Runner. Pentacle falling a bit flank back on the right flank. Finally, a bit of more, shall we say, semblance of normality after some, you know, say, very aggressive early moments. So just huge pushes from both sides, huge engagements, casualties piling up. But now it looks like the uh, waiting time up here as we see another wave of violence unleashed here. Scotland with the advancing photo gun ideas. Pentacle moving from one side, other Pentacle from the other side. Puma going for a deep flank here. Going for the Scots. A brilliant maneuver here by Elpern. Could maybe blitz for the Panther Force. Almost got one of the Scots here. Almost got it. Jackson going in. No needs for the Elps in shot, but there you go. Got one of the Scots. And Panther Force pushing through the smoke here. Using the smoke bombs. Two thumbs up there to Elpern. He's about to lose the. Oh, he got the Jackson as well. Panther Force blitzing. Panther Force taking a lot of damage. Infantry support was not able to follow up with the attack's pace, though. Fifth Cal holding up there. Infantry casualties piling up. Pan 4 continues the blitz. Still, he did some serious damage to Elpen here. He took out the Jackson and a Scott. Even got a veteran anti tank gun. He might lose the Pan 4 here. But that was a beautiful attack there by Expansion Runner. Just good use of smoke, maneuvering, flanks, and everything. Like, if he just been able to keep the Pan infantry pace for the rest of it, I think it would have worked out great. But still, Elpen, though, kept his calm, held his nerve, and actually managed to survive somewhat intact. I mean, thumbs up to him as well. That was really great. Some players would have panicked and probably just lost everything, but not Elpen. Still, great attack there by Expansion Runner. That's just two thumbs up. Textbook good flank stuff. Going for another Panther 4 there. Still, he has now has a lot of vehicles and armor I need to repair, but. Damn impressive. Another Jackson with the Felpen. Damn impressive. Panther on the right flank. Need to fix up the troops reinforcement healing. Scott's still bombarding away. Poon pulling back for repairs. Should do on piling squad. In fact, two of them now took repairs, so didn't miss that. Probably some folks come to these. Panther on the RP. Needs to be careful not to get too overconfident with this Panther Force, though. Could easily go wrong here for expensive runner. Good hit on the advancing Ralph Squad, though. Thumbs up there. Actually, keep bouncing out in front of the Panther Force. I think it's a bit of bad. There you go. Further cast is inflicted by the Panther Four, but could have been worse, I think. Panther Four. Number one, good to go. Almost got number three ready as well. Jackson out of Elpen. So what will Expense Runner do next? Panther 4, the taking heavy hits. Going to have to fix that fast alongside the Puma. Nice use of ability in the Elpen. He also used to take aim to help spot and, you know, extend range. Great move there by Elpen. Two thumbs up to that one as well. Very overlooked ability, but it's incredibly powerful. The anti tank guns, incredibly powerful. Scott's flying away there. Panther on the left flank. Half eight of XM3. Pulling up, that again on the fire, fucking through the center. Panther moving up, shooting the right score, misses. And there you go. Got a Panther flanking again. Another deep flank here by Spencer Runner. Playing up the anti tank stuff there. Oh, that's great here. Now just bouncing up his armored vehicles here through the center. Still, he's getting the anti tanks. So he might end up suffering more here than is necessary. Also, forgetting about the Bazooka teams are doing heavy damage here. Got one in the anti tank. It's Puma racing forward here. Popping smoke here to decrease the defense fire here. Good lord, just an absolute sledgehammer attack here on Elpen using sheer mass of tanks. And it's worked. Good lord, Elpen is in a great, terrible state. But there you go. 
He finally got the ace pool, which is actually pretty great for openers. That was clearly a huge part of the expansion on his successes. And he might even get to the Panther 4 here, punishing him actually for a slightly less than great assault there in the end, relying again too much in pure mass and raw force here versus Elpen to make the assault work. Betting for the Panther 4, but he risks losing the Panther 4. Can he get. Oh, he misses! Oh no! Guys, up! And loses the Jackson, almost gets the Jackson, but doesn't in the end. Down from three Panther Force from the Puma to now just one Panther Force. Showing how quickly the tide of fortune can change when again you just suddenly end up relying on brute force. And just highlighting how powerful the 2M1 and the Tanks were, but also the Bazooka team, like they played a huge role there. In this regard, Expansion Run, I think, should have support the infantry better with uh, attack better with infantry. Which allowed him to clear up some of the stuff there. And he should have relied more on flanks again. He shouldn't have sent all of almost all of the tanks and the Puma through the center. There should be more elements on the flanks here and there. Run just, you know, one pan for them, rest straight up the gun line. I think that ended up being too costly for Expansion Runner and kind of ended up costing him the advantage he otherwise had. So, again, you know, you can very quickly just toss away a good advantage if you're getting a bit too eager. Still, he's not exactly out of the game there, but he had a huge advantage. Now he doesn't. But just absolute brutal finding him. Spectacularly brutal, but brutal nonetheless. Scott McKinnon to the Academy effort for taking a hit here. He should definitely salvage his tanks there for extra fuel if possible. Almost got the Scott there. Other folks brought the ready to move up. But no salvaging here. No salvaging at all here for Expense Runner. And for being troop there, Pentagon doing the flanking rough score. They at least sort of flanking. Should be on Pines advancing as well there. Jackson ends a great hit. And we got more cluster bombs here from Elpen. He remembers he has that ability. And Expansion Runner forgot his opponent had it, perhaps. Troop being suppressed there again, going for the fifth cover. And almost getting up here, head on. Partly controlled the light cover, which does make them harder, a bit hard to suppress. Just enough for the Stormers to get close, but then following him to the fifth cover that clears out the Storm Pioneers. They do get the fifth cover, but he might lose the Storm Pioneers, to be honest. Pen following up again. Concussive grenade off here, Kevin Wing up here. Fires to make his flanking. Fun grenade there, round the 50 cal. Almost clears it out. He just incredibly brutal hand to hand combat between Expansion and Elpen. Just constantly ensuing here. Just showing how evenly matched these players are for the most part. Phew. Jump on secure in the center. They've got five teams up here for Expansion Runner. The Kemba lands a great hand on the Scott. Jump on the fire. Almost wiped out there, in fact. Another Scott on the way for Elpen. Clearly not too worried about enemy armor. And more worried about. You know, the elite troops under the expense runner's command. Need to fix out that Panther 4 again. Close to veterans he won. He's not far from another Panther 4. 162 versus 233. Season needs to make up with the fight in Jaeger. Dex moving up there. Two kills, veterans 2. But he underestimated expense runner's tenacity. Got hit by the cannon. Fight makes the 4 charging hit. Still no second empty for 2 down. And I'm really surprised at that. They really hit hard there, to be honest, now versus. Uh, Open if he did get another FT42 set for them, but here we are. Strong party to reinforce. Fix out that Panda 4, get it back in action. Got another set of smoke bombs. Plus, of course, we're constantly trying to figure out what Open is up to. But also just disrupting what he wants to do, I imagine. So, thumbs up that six pens around it. Just wish he'd also try and set up for some bad assault from time to time. I think that would have some of the attacks. Oh, close one there on the fire to make. Need to get them out before the Scots just snuff them out. Panther good to go. Still not salvaging anything for extra fuel. Bit of a side of field there by Expansion Runner. Bit of an oversight. Call also Savage, I believe. That anti tank and wreckage for fuel. I mean, that'd be at least 10 fuel, and that would be 15 fuel. But you can soon go for another Panther 4. Of course, you could also decide to go for the Yak Panther. You could go for a Panther even. But there you go, another Panther 4 for Expansion Runner. For Deutschland. Final gun against the advancing riflemen. Burning fools of Yankees. Panther 4 the moving up. There you go. Catch the rifle but hits the sandbags instead. Not quite as crucial blow there to open as actually killing his men would be. Not something they're going to be calling up Eisenhower to complain about. General Eisenhower, they destroyed some sandbags. Yeah, not happening. 
Troops holding up in the east, holding up the center and the west. Victory point for nine. Notably, worth the Elpen is not really doing anything in the west at all. But a bit of notice out there. Obviously, he's worried about expense runners pushes, but at the same time, I feel like he'll still be disrupting expense runners fuel. A bit surprised the fact he hasn't tried that. Rather flying away there. The fault's going to fall back. Stream pot pushing it. Still no salvaging here. And there you go. Another set of cluster bombs here. So Elpen calls in once more. Sturm Pioneer with the Panther Force, making the push, another Panther Force ready, cluster bombs ring down here on the MG-54, clearing it out. By now, Elpen may just turn the tide on how many Americans Germans were killed by the cluster bombs, and maybe hit on German lines, clean back. But there you go, push it, let's go with the Scott and Jackson. It's Galp there with the Panther Force, but there you go, almost got one of the Scots here, they got to get caught up with each other. Blitzing here with the Panther Forge increases rate of fireball, but there you go, Bazooka team on the flank, and no way of dealing with that, no supporting infantry again, still. Lose the Panther Fort. almost got the Jackson though, but he might lose the Panther Fort. he got the Jackson though. Still one Scott left though, fifth car there, trouble. Infantry continues through here, using the, well, murky landscape created by the burning tanks to actually push past the 50 cal, he's partially lost the Panther Fort though, Infantry could have pushed through there. Almost got the fifth caliber though. And wipes it, but the Scott is still there. Just utter insanity. Was this episode directed by Michael Bay or something? In which case, how? And do I have to pay him for it? I hope not. I can't afford that, I'm fairly certain. Fight from trying to get the fifth cow, but they can't get to it. No, Sherman on the way for open. Find me a Sherman. Just burning tanks all over the place. Wreckage, corpses, carnage. Michael Bay explosions. Anyways, Sherman away the Elpen almost done. Elpen's infantry is bled out. Expense Runner still has most of his infantry intact, but he's on the hand short on tanks, which Elpen is not. In fact, he needs to call in more tanks, and that's going to be the problem I think of Expense Runner. He's not really a lot of way to deal with that. He may, in fact, have to consider Yak Panzer or Panther to fight the armor in a slightly less immediately exploding manner and leave the infantry fighting to his infantry. To be honest, because again, the Panther was at this point. I'm not going to be doing much of that anyways. So I think a Yak Panther or Panther would be the best, safer choices. Concussion grenade against the Rifleman and the Reaction, but they dodge it. Sturm about to get an eye for the Sherman. Fetch me four. By Kevin the Pierce. Gets a good hit. Falls the Panther fasting it. Could he take out the Sherman? Almost got it, but the Fox could have been bled out themselves. Smoke there deployed by the Sherman. Nice save there by Elpen. And the Kedma narrowly misses because of it. Or maybe does get a bit of splash damage in the Sturm Pine Ship reinforcing. Five to make us leading a counter, including the A squad there. Iron Cross, second class material. That gets us reinforcing healing. Gagan right from there. Sturm being fixed up. Scott there with 16 kills, close to the ace level. We got 136 to 154. Another Scott shot there. Back hits with reinforcing healing. Stion Pani setting out there for expensive runner. And there you go. Kevin Lance nice out in the Scott. Fighting range hand, which is getting too close. But can you time that correctly? There you go, Lieutenant Court. Meet losing cell members and forced to retreat. Large Court, the nearby Stion Pani's market. Still got the fifth cover there. And still no artillery for expensive runner. Bungrate of the Rav Squad. Forced them out of their craterous hidey holes. Forcing away the fifth cover somehow. Oh, the flank there. Nice setup with the fighting makers. Thumbs up there to expensive runner. Meanwhile, the assault team with the Stone Pods. The fighting makers scanning down Americans left and right. But his men are taking excruciating casualties. His open lays down murderous volleys of high explosives at the advancing German troops. Their fields litter. Uh, their bodies leaving the fields with bits and pieces. A Kevin ever takes out the Scott, denying it open. His very valuable artillery piece. This is absolutely a crazy fight here. Jackson almost done there for open. Fox makes something up by the center victory point. Needs to grab the eastern one as well. He needs, you know, some sort of tank to strike. And again, the Yak Panther there. He could have caused lots to go for the Panther, which still also was the infantry, but he definitely needs something that can, like, give the tank some punches. Fox from there, close to Veteran T2. May actually want to throw down a blend curve, then fall back. Instead of finding out he had full range, because the fighting is not going to win that one. And the blend curve, of course, would negate the range advantage there for Elpen in that engagement. 
Cluster bombs again though. Cluster bombs. Right here on the machine gun and the center of expense runners. Roadside defense. One rock folks squad launches forward. But realize has to get out of there. So many tank wreckers that could have been salvaged here by uh, expense runner. Feel like there's an oversight here to be honest. Minor one, but you know, still worth pointing out. Sherman Jackson charging the following a olive green swarm of infant down to Elpen's command. Another Jackson with the expense runner. Well, not Jackson, but we're getting there for. Sherman Jackson moving up there. Checking for mine, I think. Just sending a warning shot to the expense runner. Spence Runner is the back of his base. Now there's Alpen is just lining up in front of it. He infantry charge forwards. Another Scott for Alpen there. Another M8 Scott. Second one Kevin ready there for Spence Runner. I feel like a Yak Panzer would have been pretty great for him. Though maybe he's planning for the Panther. He may just have given up with tanks for now. It's hard to say. That Bazooka team has definitely been a huge steal here for Alpen. They've really done a lot of damage to Spence Runner's tanks. Are probably pretty, were crucial in some of the, again, that big attack. It's all that sort of went, uh, well, sour. For El Spence Runner's course for Alpen, it went great. But they got great if they kept from the Sherman. Assault gun here for the Sturm Pioneers. Hosting through the Lieutenant. Fifth Cup is all the way over there. Supported by the tank, it's Mother Infantry. This is an absolutely intense fight. Probably one of the most intense fights I've covered in coming to in some time. Fifth guy holding back here. Sherman being fixed up. Spencer Runner might again be lining up for a Panther. Yak Panzer, Panzer 4. Could of course work out, but I feel like he needs something with a bit of an edge in terms of range over the Panzer 4. Looks like Egg of is going to try and flank up here from the west. Very good. There we got 111 versus 136. Scott far raining out. Barf moving in for the west point. Stuart and Pioneers moving up, but are unable to deal with two rough squads. Kevin Pursuits misses the Sherman. Fox might be having to deal with the developing situation on the left flank there for expensive runner. And left to what he's planning. Is it another Panther fort? Is it a Yak Panther? Is it a Panther? There you go, large scale contact with all the infantry with the rifle squad. Of course, that means the center is more open, and of course, the south is also a bit open. Stuart Pines, ace level, there you go. Cluster bombs again to break up this attack. He needs to get moving. I oh, need to retreat. Oh dear, Stuart Pines about to get wiped out. There you go, retreating. Fox and sending hammered as well. Cluster bombs raining down. Fox makes trying to get away, but there you go. Direct hit on the ace. Fancy maker squad. Down to half over ready. Got the northern victory point. Center one about to fall into the hands of the Americans as well. We got 109 to 128. He is not far away from a Panther, though, again. Will it help him by now? Will it help him? That's a bit of the challenge. I mean, obviously, again, it might be the ideal choice. Yeah, that's why I probably go for the Yak Panzer because it's fast in terms of manpower, but here we are. And who knows, again, maybe the Panther might just be the right choice after all because, again, it's the least manpower and that's the fastest to get out. Quick bang grenade here on the Lieutenant. Force retreat here. Going for the western point, taking a fine. There you go. Panther on the fixed bench runner. We got 89 versus 128. This battle hangs in the balance fixed bench runner. Could still be won. And of course, well, will still be lost. But this is certainly some brutal stuff. There we go. Look for the Scott. Almost got it. Almost got it. We got 81 versus 128. Maybe deep flank from here could overthrow open. But catching from an angle, he's probably not expecting. It would have to be done with sufficient speed and aggression. Maybe a Valence Sword backing up. You could say, I think, swing through here and sort of push through there, clearing up the machine guns, personally, and steal them and turn them against open. It might work. But can Expense Runner consider it? It's just going to try and tack head on into the 50 cal. We'll have to see. Sherman there deploying smoke. Possibly to disrupt any support and attack here. We can half to the machine to support it. Nice idea. Force out there by Elpen. Two thumbs up. Panther almost on the fixed bench runner. Got class bombs as well. He's just really looking through everything just to disrupt expense runner's maneuvers there. Very good. We got some light moving the flank, but again, not sufficient deep here. We've got left flank. 
Center attack broken up, got 56 versus 128. We got the Panther moving out. The Panzerkampfwagen 5. Pride of the Fasterland. Charging through the center. Strength of the Super Team. Every rocket fails to penetrate. Going for the Jackson here. A last ditch assault by Spence Runner. Maybe just using it as bait, to be honest, to draw away attention from anything else, to just find time. Pretty risky, though. Sherman lands a great hit there. Jackson almost knocked out. Assault the team for the center. He's somehow making it work, but it's coming in incredible cost. Panther knocked out. Infantry being played out. Kevin in forwards. Could try bunker in the midst of all of this. Got 727 versus 128. And got the Scott. At least a Scott was the Sherman. And there you go, and the end of the assault fails. And expense runner gives up a brutal one versus one here on Langraskaya with heavy casualties on both sides. Running close to 500. An absolutely incredible match here between two. Very skilled, very good players in the end, though. I think what ended up costing Expendable again was just that one attack there. You know, head on there with not sufficient support. You know, again, he was clearly all comfy. He feel like he could just do it there and win the war, but instead of giving Elpen a lot of room to work with. And I feel like Expendable Runner just, again, what well, did make some good attacks in there, still he just didn't lacking force. And I think he ended up just like, relying too much on brute force running again, just good maneuvering, good flanking. I think had there been some more, like, proper flank, I think he still had a chance versus Elpen after that. But I think something broke when the Expendable Runner after the attack failed. So. Absolutely amazing fight. He great play from both sides. It's just some absolutely incredible fights here. So I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. If you did subscribe, like, share, comment on it, tell a friend, tell a friend, but don't tell enemies. Listen to Pearl LinkedIn. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Hope to tomorrow again for a nice episode. Bye.